glory of the only begotten of the Father. Now, how is that true? If the, if the Jehovah Witnesses and the Arians are wrong, Jesus had a physical birth. The Holy Spirit caused Mary to conceive. He was physically begotten by God. He said, wait a minute, how can he... But what we're saying is, he existed before he was begotten. <laughs> and that gets people a little... We talked about Christ appeared in the Old Testament at different times. He appeared to Abraham most definitely. In several other places we see him, we see him appear. So the one who has always been, and this is a mystery, is then born as a human. And people have trouble with that. But that is really what the Bible says, and it's revealed that way. So we see him now, one who has always been, but now he is born. He's begotten of the Father. Oh, I've talked about, I think I've covered this. Let's see what else I have here. The word, if you look at this, Romans, some of the places make it very clear why the Aryan view is wrong. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. This is the other word that people have trouble with here. Firstborn can mean you're the oldest son. But firstborn can also mean preeminence. It means you're the most important. You have the greatest blessing, the greatest authority. So Jesus being the firstborn means he's the most important born. He's, pre he's preeminent. And that comes out in the Greek. I'm not going to do all that with you, but that's how we deal with that. Who is the image of the invisible law, the firstborn of every creature. Or the most, the preeminent, the most important of all God's creatures. In Colossians 3.15. Yes, and it, and it really says it in Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the what? Preeminence. That's why he's called the firstborn. It signifies his preeminence. Most important. Now, Jacob, in a sense, became the firstborn, even though he wasn't the firstborn. Why? He became the most important. He got his brother's blessing, and he got his brother's birthright. Now he has the preeminence. He's not the firstborn, but he's the, he's the firstborn, in that sense. All right, let's see here. Okay. The best place to deal with the Arians is from Handel's Messiah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Let's look at it. Read it with me. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called what? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The child given to us, the child who is born, that's the incarnate Christ, is called what? Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So Jesus will say in the Gospel of John, if you have seen me, you have seen my Father who sent me. Based on this scripture in Isaiah, he understood who he was and what he was doing. So the next time a JW comes to your door, if you have any kind of voice, <laughs> sing this portion of Isaiah to them. Just sing it. Wonderful counsel. Almighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace is he. That's Jesus. They'll leave. <laughs> it's, I, you know, you cannot they have a heresy that fits some of the words of God but it does not fit the whole counsel of God now did I do any other word? yes well and here we go Hebrews 1 verses 1 through 3 verse, just verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person. That's who Jesus is. He is in the full expression of the Father that we can see with our eyes in the flesh. And that's what Hebrew pronounces him. Not as a created being, but as God himself. Amen? Okay. You have an assignment? You're out of here. <laughs>
You know, I've got at home, I've got an apologetic against uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. I haven't got to use it yet, but I wish I did. But if you just, just sing to them, those things, just sing to them, things things they say, you know, that, 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 first, that first verse, the first few verses in John 1, Yes. Uh, the way they've got it written is that he is a God. And their translation, they, they say that because of the, the way the Greek is written, that the translation, there should be an A in there. But if they said that, then they would have to say that there was a, a man who came from a God, John, a John, a John the Baptist. So it does. If you read below, and I remember it doesn't fit with what's written below. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Well, here's your assignment. Oh, got assignment. Read Acts chapter one through nine, uh -oh. and you're going to make for me a concept map. Ooh. What is a concept map? You're going to draw some circles and connect some things. Here's what your concept app is about. I'll show you how. But your concept app's theme is going to be church growth in the book of Acts. Now, you can start it. I'll show you. You make a circle. And the church is born on what day, folks? Pentecost. Pentecost. So you put, put some tons of fire in there. Right, Pentecost. The right church is born. Well, then you're going to connect it with the next step in church growth, and see how they connect. So your none of your none of your diagrams will look exactly the same, but you're sort of mapping out in your head and on paper how the church grows in those nine chapters. All right. Now, one thing to include. Uh, sometimes you know, like a, I wouldn't. Mentioned when Paul, that you might not think of doing, when, Paul, when Saul of Tarsus, renamed later Paul, when Saul of Tarsus persecutes the church, he said, Well, that's not church growth. Well, yes, it is. What did the Christians do? And what did they do when they fled Jerusalem? They preached. They preached. They preached. So he's key to spreading the gospel. That's what we say, you know, putting the fire out with gasoline. <laughs> yes. So, so some things you might not think of putting in there. So you're kind of diagramming, in a sense, this concept about the church grows. Just read through and say, oh yeah, the church grows here and it grows there. Oh, this caused the church to See what you get. You can just hand do it. If some of you like to do it on computer, PowerPoint, be real official, you can do it that way too. Some of you like that, some of you like, don't ever ask me to do that, please. Okay. Father. All right. Bless our students in nine chapters of Acts and in using to defend their faith what they learned today, tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah. You want this back? No, I don't want it. I think put it back out there under the desk. <laughs> <laughs>